We're queuing things up today in the green pastures of Grandview Woodland. With me on camera as always is Rick Von Schmidt. You may have seen my recent vlog from Los Angeles on model and actress Dorothy Stratton. In fact, I think we have a clip. Rick, you want to roll that? No, I said if we flew to Los Angeles, I might buy you a sandwich on the plane. Yo, we're back here, ladies and gentlemen. I thought I'd follow up that Los Angeles vlog with a two-parter here in Dorothy's hometown, Vancouver. Dorothy Stratton skyrocketed to fame in 1979 as a model and quickly became an A-list actor. She started in television with appearances and hits like Fantasy Island. And here she is on my favorite show, Buck Rogers in the 25th Century. Tragically, Dorothy passed away a year later in 1980 at the age of 20. This is the famous Dairy Queen on Hastings Street that Dorothy talked about when she was on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Johnny asked her, What's this business of you working in an ice cream stand? Dorothy replied that she worked at the Dairy Queen for four years part-time while she was going to high school. And this is it. Sadly, it has just recently closed and the property will be redeveloped. In this part one vlog, I'm going to explore the Dairy Queen as well as a few other places relevant to Dorothy's story. And another first here on the JCVC channel will solve a 40-year-old mystery. I have discovered a few details and will shed new light on her history in Vancouver. According to the worldwide internets, Dorothy was born February 28, 1960 at the Grace Hospital. Over 100,000 babies arrived in this old beauty, which is sadly no more. Thanks to our friends at the City of Vancouver Archives, we have this 1953 sectional map. And we can see that the Grace Hospital was at the southeast corner of 26 and Heather. Let's go. All right, we're here at 26 and Heather. Passers-by would never know the history of the site, but there is one clue. If you look closely, you'll see a sign showing that the compound is called Grace Estate. When baby Dorothy arrived home from the hospital, some say it was in this house on Vanable Street in Burnaby. Dorothy would eventually start high school here at Vancouver Technical School, or TAC as the kids call it, on East Broadway in Vancouver. And while she was attending Tech, Dorothy and her family lived in this house here on William Street. But Dorothy didn't graduate from Tech because her family moved to Coquitlam. And she lived here on Gattensbury Street in this house. While in Coquitlam, Dorothy attended and graduated from Centennial High School, which was just recently demolished and replaced with this new school here. The demise of the old school is so fresh that it still exists on Google Maps. Here's a screenshot. All right, we're back at the Dairy Queen here. The closure caught me by surprise. I was inside shortly before it closed and I didn't even think to vlog it, but I did take two pictures. Rick, you wanna? All right, here's the first one. These tables and chairs look newer, but those booths sure look vintage. DQ's been here since 1969. Dorothy Mona wiped down those very tables as part of her cleanup duties. And here's the second one with Hastings Street outside. While she was on The Tonight Show, Dorothy told Johnny that she was working at a telephone company as a clerk typist when she got the call to go to Los Angeles. Johnny quipped she was the only good thing to come out of the phone company. And I think I know where that is. Let's go. I believe Dorothy worked here for six weeks. This building on Kingsway in Burnaby is what locals call the boot. 
There's a rumor that Dorothy also worked at a second Dairy Queen location. Thanks to the good people at DorothyStratton.com, we have access to the form Dorothy completed when she applied to work here at the telephone company, and it includes her resume, which will address that rumor. Rick, you want to put that up? In her application to BC Tel, stamped June 20, 1978, Dorothy lists her real name, Dorothy Ruth Hoogstraten. She wants to work as a stenographer. She's looking for permanent work. She can type 75 words a minute. She's got lots of great skills. And she mentions her graduation from Centennial High School, June 1978. She filled out a resume as part of her application. I've circled her signature at the bottom. This is where things get interesting. All right, we all know about the Dairy Queen here, 2109 East Hastings Street. Dorothy worked there January 75 to May 78 as a cook, waitress, cashier for three sixty dollars an hour. And here's the mysterious second Dairy Queen in Nanaimo on Vancouver Island. She worked there in the summer of 75, perhaps staying with family or friends or some such. She worked as a cook, waitress, and cashier, and she only made two fifty dollars an hour. I asked the good people at the Nanaimo Archives if they had any pictures of their Dairy Queen from 1975. All they sent me was this picture from 1965. I guess there's a chance Dorothy may have worked right here. Back to her resume here, Rick. Check this out. Gypsy Scissors Unisex. She worked as a hairdresser. 106 West 18th in Vancouver. Let's go. All right, we got a 108 here on 18th, Rick, but no 106. Just a bunch of houses here. It doesn't look like a place for a hairdresser. Something's off. Let's check that resume again. All right, lower left-hand corner of the red box there, the telephone number. I grew up in North Vancouver, and I recognize those digits as a North Van number. Is it possible Dorothy might have made a mistake in her application here? All right, this is a million to one shot, but let's see if the good people at the North Vancouver Archives here can help us out. All right, Rick. Let's see if we can find a book, uh, 1978, listings of businesses or addresses or some such here. Quite a few bucks. Right there. And there it is, Rick. Incredible. Gypsy Scissors, 106 West 18th. Let's go see if the building still stands. Incredible. The building is still there, Rick. Let's get a picture from across the street. Dorothy Stratton worked right here in 1978. She washed and dried hair, answered the telephone, and booked appointments. She made $4 an hour. This is a mystery. It's been around for more than 40 years, and we solved it right here. You heard it here first. And we're going to wrap up part one of my Vancouver Dorothy vlog here at the back of the abandoned Dairy Queen. This is where Dorothy would have taking out the evening's trash and perhaps dreaming of better days ahead. Please keep an eye out for part two in which we're going to use some mysterious architectural clues to find the place where Dorothy posed for her first modeling photos for Playboy magazine. And we'll document the demise of this historic 50-year-old Dairy Queen. I hope you enjoyed this little taste of old Vancouver as she once was. Special thanks to my friends at the North Vancouver Museum and Archives. And thanks to Bev Sugarman for makeup and Jewel Hail Mayor for wardrobe. On behalf of Rick and myself, thanks for watching. And until next time, that's a good beat.